Hello, sisters and brothers. Uh, I want to thank you for having me. Uh, before I begin uh, to go into the heart of my brief contribution, I want to read a quote uh, from Farrell Dobbs, who wrote the book Teamster Rebellion, uh, the great general strike of Minneapolis, 1934. He said, and I quote, under capitalism, the main police function is to break strikes and to repress other forms of protest against the policies of the ruling class. Any civic usefulness, other forms of police activity may have like controlling traffic or summoning ambulances is strictly incidental to the primary repressive function. Personal inclinations of in individual cops do not alter this basic role of the police. All must comply with the ruling class dictates. As a result, police repression becomes one of the most naked forms through which capitalism subordinates human rights to the demands of private property. 2019 was a year of revolution and revolt and the very seeds of counter-revolution as well. From Puerto Rico to Hong Kong, to Bolivia, to France, to Chile, to the Sudan and Algeria, the world rejected the 40 years of neoliberalism and capitalism that breeds poverty, hunger, environmental destruction, systematic violence, and unbridled uh, gains of wealth to the top 0.01%. May 25th, the, the day George Floyd died, will mark the beginning of an outright uprising against racial oppression and law enforcement terror. This revolt is rooted in a deeper crisis of US capitalism, the economic depression, the pandemic of COVID-19 has exposed the frailty of the US empire and US exceptionalism as a superpower in the world. The revolt has unleashed a new political paradigm that will have stops and starts, but the US will never be the same. As George Floyd's six-year-old daughter stated, my daddy has changed the world. Without the multiracial youth and working class revolt, we would not have the indictments of the killer cops. It has caused a major crisis for the political and law enforcement establishment, beginning with the, with the racist in chief, President Trump, who for the past three years have emboldened the right wing white nationalist and right wing populist forces in the United States. Trump is a lightning rod of the events. His open racism, sexism, anti-immigrant racism and xenophobia and a pro big business agenda has added more fuel to the fire. As the Republican party and those within the establishment attempt to separate themselves from the crisis of bourgeois leadership to which Trump cannot exhibit. The Democratic Party is also in crisis. We must remember Obama when he was in office from 2008 to 2016. He ushered a moment where the working class, the youth and black youth in particular rose up and rose the banner of Black Lives Matter. It forced the establishment under Obama to enact reforms. 
but the most recent events have literally thrown those reforms of that historical period into the waste bin of history. The Democratic Party on a local and national level finds, find themselves in profound crisis. Mayor Dark Durkin of Seattle, Washington is being asked to resign from office because she has backed up the police violence of the Seattle Police Department. Just last night, the youth alongside the Socialist City Councilor Shama Sawant occupied City Hall and demanding that the mayor resign and highlighting the violence of the Seattle Police Department. Jacob Fry, the mayor of Minneapolis, who can go on national TV and cry crocodile tears while he authorizes his police force to crack down on the protesters. And right here in the city that I'm born and raised, New York, Mayor Bill de Blasio attempts to speak from both sides of his mouth, attempting to rhetorically support the protesters while at the same time turning a blind eye to the violence of the New York City Police Department. The Democratic Party that controls many city governments have enacted a neoliberal agenda with major cuts to key public and social services that only exacerbate the conditions that exist among the working class and communities of color. The movement has also forced the, the relics and symbols of hate and, op and oppressive power to come crashing down. The, re the revolt will win concessions, but the Democratic Party is working overtime to control and co-opt this moment. We've seen performative gestures that literally cost nothing for the Democratic Party. And Joe Biden, the presumptive Democratic Party nominee for president, has made it clear he doesn't support def defunding or dismantling police. While at the same time, the titans of capitalism throw money at various Black Lives Matter organizations, the Black misleadership class, community and nonprofit organizations. Amazon threw $10 million into the pot. Nike, $40 million. And Walmart, $100 million. These corporate forces are the same forces that will oppose union organizing, union drives in their companies. These are the same forces that deny the proper PPE to protect their workers from COVID-19. And they are the same forces that reject Medicare for all. They are the true criminals, the thugs and the barbarians in society and in the world. We have seen the entry of the mighty labor movement onto the stage of events, demanding not only racial justice and decrying the murder of George Floyd, but linking this to the struggle for economic justice. In Minneapolis, the nurses, the teachers, the Transport Workers Union, ATU 1005, and postal workers and other unions around the, around the country have said, this madness must stop and we must organize and demand not just economic justice for our co-workers, but demand racial justice for the black working class, the poor, and the most oppressed. 
there's a discussion taking place in the labor movement about the role of the police unions. This is a very important con a contribution to this historical moment and the role that the police unions play on one side as the security guards for capital and at the same time being a organization for the rank and file uh, police officers. And many people within the labor movement has stated clearly, they don't want the police unions within the labor movement. But the entry of the labor movement into the struggle must be contextualized. We must remember that the Red for Ed movement took place only a year ago, when you saw the teachers go on strike in major cities to demand defense of public education and to maintain key resources for the wider working class, communities of color, and youth. It was 400,000 workers go on strike only two years ago. And that was the largest since 1986. And Minneapolis is a special place. And it's not surprising that the labor movement has spoken on the question of racial injustice and oppression. It is the birthplace of one of the most important general strikes in labor history in the United States, and that is the Teamsters General Strike of 1934. But we must also remember that it was the nurses, unions, that spoke out against the uh, inability of our for-profit healthcare system to tackle COVID-19. It was the unorganized of young workers at Amazon and Instacart that spoke out against the lack of PPE, but also was fighting for greater democracy in the workplace. So the power of the working class and organized labor is decisive in our struggle against capitalism and racism. As the real thugs, the 630 billionaires that reside in the, United, in the United States and around the world, their wealth went up from $434 billion to $3.4 trillion of wealth. Building a powerful mass movement is crucial now as the ruling, ruling elite is in crisis with a clear radical analysis, program, strategy, rooted in multiracial working class youth because capitalism is resourceful and very powerful. We must have an international perspective of organization, the development of multi-layered leadership that is based in the grassroots, that is independent and unbought from the parties and institutions of capitalism. Many people will say you should vote to vote out Donald Trump out of office. He will go down in history as one of the most hated presidents in US history. And unfortunately, Bernie Sanders abdicated his historical moment to support Joe Biden, perhaps the weakest Democratic Party presidential nominee in generations. We must say no to Trump and no to Joe Biden. And we must build a new party of the working class and new fighting organizations, building and solidifying the power of the, the, the emerging socialist movement in the United States and strengthening our labor movement. In my final few words, we must talk about program. First and foremost, we must highlight, we need the conviction of the killer cops of George Floyd. 
and it must have a national and international character, a national and international campaign. We must talk about democratic community control boards over public safety and policing. And right now, the police departments around the country are feeling like they're being attacked by the larger working class and poor. And we must say, for too long, the police departments have acted as their own caste in society, not only as security guards for capitalism, but actually a force that have their own interests at stake. We must have no trust in the political establishment. We must end all curfews and drive out the National Guard that's in a number of cities. We must cut the police budgets. Here in New York, the police budget is $6 billion. As you compare that to the cuts to education and health care. That money should go to housing, education, health care, jobs, and key programs to uplift working people, the poor, and particularly our youth. We must tax the rich and Wall Street who have hoarded the money for over 40 years. Shama Sawant the socialist city councilor has put forward these key demands as she presents this to the movement and to the city council. She has stated, one, a ban on Seattle police use and purchase of chemical weapons, rubber bullets, sonic and ultrasonic weapons, a ban or ch on chokeholds, a cut in half of police budgets to fund restorative justice and tax Amazon and big business to fund housing, jobs, and a Green New Deal. But something is very vital, that as we're putting forward these demands, it must be linked to this key message. We must indict this system and find it guilty for crimes against the working class, the poor, and the most oppressed. As Malcolm X said over 50 years ago, and I quote, our community must reinforce its moral responsibility to rid itself of the effects of years of exploitation, neglect, and apathy, and wage an unrelenting struggle against police brutality by any means necessary. We must fight for a socialist world and it is truly possible because capitalism and systematic racism is the pandemic. Thank you.